here, well, let me take you to the uh, whether the president's included in the 14th Amendment. And I'll ask you just a, sp a specific question. Um, I'm a little surprised to not have heard on the intervener side and the amici on, on your side a real full-throated response to the absurdity doctrine argument. I mean, there's an argument here, and I'd like you to respond to it. Um, how is it not, and I'm not making fun of any of this, how is it not absurd to say anybody who engaged in insurrection can't serve an office who engage, except the president or a former president or a vice president or a former president? How is that not absurd? So the absurdity doctrine requires, and looking at sort of the Scalia-Garner definition, which is as probably the best out there, um, it has to sort of be beyond, beyond reason. It couldn't even be reasonable for the framers to take that approach. And here's the approach the framers took, and we have to look at the historical context as well. They said the presidency, remember it's office under the United States, officer of the United States, so we're talking office under the United States, is protected through presidential electors through presidential electors. So that's one protection. The second protection was- but, I'm sorry to interrupt before you go into the second, but do, do you really think the framers took a whole lot of comfort in the fact that the electors are gonna protect us from an insurrectionist former president like a Jefferson Davis? Yes, and that's why they included them. 